Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers third party toy review. In today's video we're taking a look at a pre-production early sample of Zeta Toys Pioneer, the bumblebee that's been sent to another planet to see if it's safe, uh, if there's the resources for survival. He is a pioneer for those Cybertronians, hence the name. This has come to me from Robot Kingdom. They were sent a sample, had a play around with it, said, Ben, you need to have a play with this. Uh, so yes, here it is. Uh, first off, off the bat, it looks sensational in hand. Uh, really does. It's a gorgeous piece. It's not without its flaws, but again, this is a pre-production sample. Uh, things have not yet been finalized. They're still working on some of the tabbings and the resistances, but it's uh, kind of there just to give you the idea of what it's going to look like and uh, feel like. Uh, comparatively speaking, uh, very solid piece. Uh, I'm a big Zeta fan. I enjoy the work that Zeta do. Uh, this, in my opinion, is some of their best work and leaps and bounds ahead of anything else they've released. And I mean, I love their uh, Bruticus and their Superion, but just this in hand, uh, personally, one of my favorite pieces. Their plastic that's used is very comparable to the plastic that's been used on the 3A Bumblebee. Uh, it feels very similar. Indeed, you can see that I've just uh, missed a few of these tabs as I've transformed him. Now, uh, mine has arrived and these buttons on the back here don't work, but these are actually working lights. I can just remove one of these like this. See, there's batteries in there and there's a small tab. Once you push the light down, it should press on this button. Uh, but mine, unfortunately, don't work at the moment. There may be that the batteries I'm using have had it or uh, the switch could be broken. Uh, before we go into detail about Bumblebee himself, let's take a look at the accessories that we get. Uh, we get his cannon. Again, love this kind of dirty yellow that we've got going on. And uh, that highlighted silver on there. We've got his uh, mallet uh, or his large kind of hammer. Uh, wasn't this just used in the last night? I'm not sure if we got this in any of the other movies. It kind of comes across as being uh, something that must be included now with every Bumblebee release, but I'm not uh, dissing it because it does look sensational, doesn't it? There's a lot of effort gone in these pieces. I've got his battle mask separate at the moment. Again, very nice look. Love the frosted glass that we've gone for. We have his blade. Uh, this is done as a sharp, almost scalpel-esque blade. Uh, looks a bit like a utility knife or box knife, box cutter, something along those lines. And then we get the more kind of traditional sword style blade that we're used to seeing on Bumblebee. Uh, these are his standard accessories. I mean, scale wise, nothing really comes close uh, to this. I don't really know what it scales with, whether he works with Prime. No, I mean, this is the biggest version of the movie Prime that I own. This is the Black Mamba version of Prime. Of course, there was that Taikong Zan oversized version of Prime, uh, which may may have worked. Not entirely convinced, though. Uh, we do have MP10 here, and we have Masterpiece Bumblebee. Now, I do have Wei Zhang's take on the uh, oversized Studio series. I still don't have the Alloy Mech, Alloy Mech, or Black Mamba. Their take on it, I mean, that's probably a pretty close scale, I would say. It's still not exact. Uh, we could bring in Sandwich Wiki there as well. Again, probably not quite the right scale. And personally, height-wise, I think you're looking at somebody like uh, Mask 
figure, for example. I think possibly that sort of scale to work well with Bumblebee if you like incorporating your action figures and maybe bringing in the likes of the B25 figures. Uh, that sort of character to scale with them. Uh, again, I could uh, have all these B25s kind of squaring off. Uh, they could be uh, my Earth soldiers uh, kind of on task with John Cena uh, doing their paintballing activities when Bumblebee crash lands. Uh, let's just take a closer look at Bumblebee. Again, this tab's just not quite tabbing in as well as I would have liked. Uh, he does have a fair few panels and it's just a matter of getting these all to line up. Like there's a tab just above here that needs to push in. Uh, you got enough resistance behind, but uh, had to switch these feet, had to flip them around and it originally arrived in vehicle mode. It was mistransformed. But I mean, this is gorgeous. Uh, we don't have a VW logo on the vehicle, but it is quite clearly a Volkswagen Beetle. I uh, love the dirt and grime on there. We have a bit of rubbing on the wheels, a little bit of clearance issues. But again, this is something that uh, can be rectified just by a little bit of adjustment here and there. Uh, it does certainly. There we go. It does certainly look the part, it's just that very slight fine tuning. Uh, we need a little bit of extra clearance on these back wheels. We have a pivoting hinge here. This switches around and we show uh, kind of Cybertronian detailing on the inside there. Uh, once we switch those around, uh, this is all kind of covered off with wheel guards. And we have several tabs along these front sections which make up this entire hood and again these are tolerances that they're working on that's the idea that we feed back what we think about the product the strengths and weaknesses i mean to look at it looks sensational doesn't it i think they've nailed the paint scheme i think it definitely pulls off that kind of very rustic look uh, I do like the smoked windows, possibly. Uh, maybe it's not an essential part. I think it's to aid in hiding those robotic sections and kind of distracting and taking that away from it. Uh, I mean, side view could pass off that that's a seat, possibly. Uh, it does look more like a rear kind of mounted engine block in there. But uh, in my opinion, I mean, that's a very... Very gorgeous looking vehicle mode, uh, loose tabs and all. Not that I feel it's uh, completely relevant, uh, but we do have a little bit of visible bot syndrome on the underside there. I know some people uh, do like to see the underside of the Transformers. There may be positioning for his weapons on the underside. Like I said, I didn't get any instructions. This is all kind of playing it uh, from memory of me transforming it up and looking at uh, stock photos that have been produced uh, but I'm, I'm happy with how that looks I think there's an adequate amount of uh, visibility and I'll see we have the lump here which would drop down and then his head would be visible much like the shoe in the movie now to get him transformed up we're going to come around to the back we're going to want to split these back panel pieces uh, these leg are tabbed in just on that door panel just unplug them from that foot piece this actually now rotates around and that's going to form part of the foot these leg panels here these rotate around forming those Cybertronian wheel arches this back panel piece is tabbed in at several areas you want to untab from here it's then tabbed in here like so and then also tabbed in at the top of that window in multiple places this piece here is going to come round rotate and go into the underside 
this then folds down and down and then this panel here is going to lift up it now clears this section here clearance is very very minimal but it clears it none the less uh, coming around to these feet this circle panel folds down uh, same with this one bring the foot down around straighten that up like so this section here is going to come down and that's going to form part and parcel of that foot so it's going to lock out and this section is going to come all the way up like so you can then come around to this leg section this is going to fold down again make sure that we rotate the wheel so that we've got this wheel guard and if we look there is a tab just on the inside of the leg the knee will drop down extend at the knee pushing this knee forward moves this knee joint down and that allows these leg pieces to fold on this hinge and these are going to push in and tab like so uh, this panel piece here now that we're clear we can just rotate this around like this now that we have no clearance problems this can then fold down this here is then going to fold down on this hinge uh, be wary though this is a thin translucent hinge that's just something that i show my concerns on and then if we look this side of the wheel we have two tabs so this is going to rotate and that's going to locate here tabbing in and then this tab here is going to locate just push lock and secure in to position uh, there we go that's the legs tidying up pretty nicely that's already incredibly impressive next we're going to tackle these side panels this is going to fold down like so and these windows are going to fold inwards as well uh, kind of reminds me a bit of uh, was it bug bite the uh, go bot that we had back in the day uh, again this side it's just tabs down and uh, this is going to just tab up like so uh, <laughs> certainly a different look for him obviously with this being a test shot the uh, resistances aren't quite there yet uh, mine does come untapped and i'm transforming him yours may not uh, hopefully yours will be tightened by the time this reads the final product so you actually untab from here this whole panel here is tabbed in and tabbed in again at the side of that bonnet and we also untab it from the top here so again on this side untab from there untab from there and this panel here is going to run tab as well this here is all uh, kind of a loose piece as well this is going to fold backwards on itself this panel here is going to fold outwards and then this section here is going to fold upwards into that void so again with this side we're gonna fold this panel out this panel here is on a double hinge that's gonna fold backwards onto itself like so and then this is gonna fold into that void we created by bringing this panel out so hold on a piece you can now detach it's not only attached to these side panels it's also attached to the underside of the vehicle mode just here so this can lift up like so these can come out of the way and that now allows this section here to come down this is attached here this is attached up here and this is all on its own independent axis as you can see uh, this is designed rotate 
all the way around and you've got so much going on here with these hinges uh, that it does become a little bit complex but you want to end up with it being uh, a 180 of what we started with they rotate inwards this rotates inwards back around to the front uh, we're left with this kind of bonnet panel piece uh, we can lift bumblebee's head up this panel piece is on a rocking hinge that's going to rock over and sit like so shoulders then come all the way up and around and there's a lip just on there like so that connects on and we can then straighten those down uh, again with this side bring that around straightening off that shoulder pushing and connecting that to that lipped hinge with the head section tilted back that now allows this piece here to hold inwards this entire metal hinge section here rotate upwards forming part and parcel of the torso this then drops down it's on double hinges there's a hinge here and a hinge here and basically this is going to tab in and that those shoulders need to be locked this collapses down there's a tab just on the back of that waist where that just tabs in bring these chest panels forward and remember these shoulders need to be tabbed in again bring the chest panel forward and make sure that the shoulder is tabbed in arm can then be rotated up right then uh, coming back around to the back section where we left it off uh, basically what we need to do is this panel here is going to come all the way up and you want to get these wheels to go all the way around move the arm up uh, this will only go one way but the wheel does go up and over through the top section here like so so it's at the top of this uh, wheel panel and there's a tab on the underside of that armpit that allows this to be secured into position there we go that's just gonna push and tab in there and then these going to lock up and this one collapses this comes all the way up to here and then these two here join as you can see I've tabbed these two sections in if you look underneath here there's some grooves for the yellow sections to go in it's difficult to get it from this angle where uh, these are loose on this particular sample uh, they're kind of held down by friction uh, but as i adjust the tires uh, kind of getting it all to tally up at the same time is a little bit difficult uh, but uh, like i like i said i can't emphasize this enough i've been assured that all tolerances will be rectified for the end product uh, so come around to the front and come around to the hands this adjusts outwards and much like other bumblebees we get the ability to open up and rotate the fists bring that back in and there we have his fist we can open up the arm place the cannon section on bring that down lock the large cannon in instead of the fist the same port that we use to tab in his gun 
uh, can also be used for the blades as well. And just bring that back in, pushing and securing into location. As far as the battle mask goes, head lifts up. and slides into place. And here we have him fully transformed up in all of his glory. Uh, with those tolerances rectified, uh, this could easily have been uh, one of my figures of the year. It is those uh, little bits that are letting it down at the moment. Just the tabbing in the side area and that little bit of flexibility on that backpack. But all in all, this is a gorgeous piece. This is what we should, in my opinion, have got from the likes of Takara. As you can see there, that backpack has just come untabbed. It is those fine tweaks, which is gonna separate this from being a really good figure to an outstanding figure. So I pray that they do get those rectified. But I mean, the paint job is sublime. Love that weathered look. Love the amount of articulation they've crammed into this and the high levels of detail and complexity. Bearing in mind that this does transform. He is a good, big, solid figure. He looks outstanding. Yes, he's not exactly screen perfect, but for a transforming figure, it is leaps and bounds of head of any of the other competition. I absolutely adore this figure. I adore what they have done. They've taken a risk uh, to give us a figure like this, uh, especially considering what Hasbro and Sakara did with them with regards to their Unicron. Uh, honestly, over the moon with this piece. Uh, it is outstanding. And I highly anticipate the final product because uh, with those points rectified, it is going to be a benchmark in terms of movie figures. They have performed some DX9 style magic on this movie verse B. Now, size comparison, this is a tough one, isn't it? Look, we've got MPM Bumblebee, we've got the oversized MPM Bumblebee with the additional paint applications. We now have the Zeta Toys Bumblebee. We have the 3A official highly articulated Bumblebee statue. And then of course we have the 3A stroke 3.0 highly articulated Optimus Prime statue. The height of a Zeta and 3A stroke 3.0 is uh, nigh on the same. I mean, these two look so close to one another, it's somewhat scary. Again, we do have lights and the headlamps on my Zeta, but I can't get those to work. Again, they may just need new batteries, but uh, what an exceptional piece. Side profile, we're greeted with a very similar outlook, albeit we have the fake rear arches here on the Zeta B. Yeah, the real one's kind of folded up in amongst here, and the light system is on the legs. Instead, uh, we have the knees, again, in the same sort of area doing the same sort of thing. We have a much smaller foot base on the Zeta product as well. Going around to the back, obviously the back on 3A is tidied up a lot cleaner, uh, but then again, there are no transforming parts. And uh, we have the wheels in the correct location. They can move them further across. They are on that pivoting hinge. Uh, I think they've done uh, an impeccable job considering. Uh, very, very impressed with the engineering thought and effort that's gone into this B. It's exceptional. Definitely my favorite B. I still adore my 3A Bumblebee. It's a gorgeous figure and the prize uh, between him and Prime, they are the pride of my statues. But Unfortunately, they are exactly that. They are statues. Uh, Zeta have given us a highly articulated transformer. Uh, tolerances aside, uh, which does transform and does, of course, uh, articulate. Uh, we've got up and down on the head. Nice range on there. We can go left and we can go right. We've got full rotation 
on those shoulders. They can come up to the side like that. There is an upper bicep rotation. We have a double jointed bend on the elbow. We have a, a pivot on that wrist. Again, that needs a little bit of tightening in my opinion. There's some rotation, there's some fully articulated fingers. We do have a waist rotation. There's even an abdominal crunch on that waist. Again, how we need to make sure that this backpack section doesn't come unpegged. That's something they do need to work on. Legs forwards, legs backwards, legs out to the side, upper thigh rotation. Got a nice, huge bend on that knee and we do have that ability to bring that kneecap right the way down giving it a very natural look and then we get that up and down rocker on the toe as well as a really nice pivot side to side it's just that fine tuning that needs to be rectified and then we've got an outstanding rendition of bumblebee he's wonderfully dynamic the guy's got so much potential thoroughly love what they've done uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below uh, personally i do think this is a game changer i think uh, zeta have gone above and beyond yes there's probably always going to be room for improvement uh, but for an original design i think they've done an exceptional job the transformation isn't overly complex uh, one you get the hang of it it is fiddly with that backpack section with everything that folds in but again that is down to those tolerances once they are rectified i honestly believe people are going to absolutely adore this figure uh, loving what they've done love the fact that there's lights inside the car as well even though mine don't work but it's the thought <laughs> it's the thought that counts uh, let me know what you think in the comments section below until next time for myself and the crew over at robot kingdom thanks for watching goodbye